longer sang. He couldn't hum. He went to work and at night he ate supper and went to bed. Henry tried to think of happy times, but all he could see were the carts carrying away everyone he loved. Henry knew he would never see his family again. Many weeks passed. One morning, Henry heard singing. A little bird flew out of a tree into the open sky. And Henry thought about being free. But how? As he lifted a crate, he knew the answer. He asked James and Dr. Smith to help him. Dr. Smith was a white man who thought slavery was wrong. They met early the next day at an empty warehouse. Henry arrived with a box. I will mail myself to a place where there are no slaves, he said. James stared at the box, then at Henry. What if you cough and someone hears you? I will cover my mouth and hope, Henry said. Dr. Smith wrote on the box, To William H. Johnson, Arch Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Henry would be delivered to friends in Philadelphia. Then he printed on the crate in big letters, This side up with care. Henry needed an excuse to stay home or the work boss would think he had run off. James pointed to Henry's sore finger, but Henry knew it wasn't bad enough. He opened a bottle of oil of vitriol. No! cried James. Henry poured it on his hand. It burned his skin to the bone. Now the boss would have to let him stay home. Dr. Smith bandaged Henry's hand. They arranged to meet the next morning at four o'clock. The sun was not yet up when Henry climbed into the box. Ready, he said. James nailed down the lid. Dr. Smith and James drove to the station. The railway clerk tipped the box over and nailed a paper to the bottom. Dr. Smith begged the clerks to be careful, but they didn't listen. They threw the box into the baggage car. Hours passed. Henry was lifted up and thrown again, upside down. He heard waves splashing. This must be the steamboat headed for Washington, D.C. The ship rode smoothly, but Henry was still upside down. Blood rushed to his head. His face got hot. His eyes ached. He thought his head would burst. But he was afraid to move. Someone might hear him. I'm tired of standing, someone said. Why don't we move that box and sit on it, said another. Henry held his breath. Could they be talking about his box? Henry was pushed. The box scraped the deck. Now he was on his right side. Now on his left. And suddenly, right side up. What do you think is in here? said the first man. Mail, I guess, said the other. I am male, thought Henry. But not the kind they imagine. Henry 
was carried off the steamboat and placed in a railroad car, this time head up. He fell asleep to the rattling song of the train wheels. He awoke to a loud knocking. Henry, are you all right in there? All right, he answered. The cover was pried open. Henry stretched and stood up. Four men smiled at him. Welcome to Philadelphia. At last, Henry had a birthday. March the 30th, 1849. His first day of freedom. And from that day on, he also had a middle name. Everyone called him Henry Box Brown. <laughs>